All right, let's go ahead and jump into things because I know everyone's time is super valuable. Hello again and welcome to a webinar with TechSoup and AWS to understand some best practices in terms of using AWS in general, as well as using your credit. My name is Jamin Gluck, and I am accompanied by Angela, as well as Oscar, and we're going to be talking throughout the next 60 or so minutes about why organizations, big or small, in all different types of mission areas, can find value in using Amazon Web Services. But I want to make sure you understand that this is absolutely meant to be engaging. This is not a one-way monologue, but it's really meant to help answer any questions you might have. There is no such thing as a bad question. So please, we'll ask you throughout this uh, webinar to participate. Um, you're already doing a great job by telling us where you're from, but if you have a question, no matter if we're in the middle of presenting, please do put it in the chat and we'll be sure to get to it. Uh, by the end of this session. So with that in mind, I want to kick off a little bit about what programs might be available as it pertains to using AWS for your organization. The first thing that I love to emphasize before any conversation that we have with organizations, again, big or small, is that you're absolutely not alone. We get it. I have been here for eight years, and I understand that navigating AWS and understanding the concepts associated with using cloud technology can be really challenging at times. But the good news is that there's an entire team, both on this webinar, as well as behind the scenes, dedicated to supporting your organization and its use to a use of Amazon Web Services. So in the spirit of that support, I want to highlight a couple of different programs. The first one is the AWS nonprofit credit program. And we are so proud to be able to be partnering with TechSoup on a global scale to enable organizations of all sizes with promotional credit to help them start and grow their use of AWS. By merely navigating through the AWS marketplace, your organization can access $1,000 in promotional credit immediately through TechSoup. Additionally, I want to showcase the AWS Partner Network. In addition to working with AWS directly, myself and Angela and our entire team, we have a robust bench of partners that can help your organization get started as well as grow. So we really ask that you come with an idea or a challenge, and then our partners can really help you solve for that goal uh, on AWS. Additionally, we have a technical hub, which is made up of a variety of different free plan solutions to help your organization get started and grow. So one of those examples could be a call center. If your organization might be exploring using call center technology, then we have solutions already prepackaged to help you deploy that type of solution in the cloud. And then the last is just journey help really understanding where you are on your cloud adoption journey. Because if you ask me and a lot of my peers, it's really about when organizations, nonprofits get started on the cloud, rather about if they get started. So even if you're in the infancy of your journey to using AWS, we wanna help you, help you understand what's out there, help you understand what questions to ask, what questions you might not be thinking about. So again, by Engaging with this journey help, we can help you no matter where you are on your journey. So with that in mind, I'm going to pass it over to a solutions architect, Angela, who's joining us to give us a little bit of an overview of what AWS is and how it's valuable to organizations, big and small. Angela, over to you. Thanks, Jamin. Hi, everyone. My name is Angela, and I am a solutions architect at AWS. I am so excited um, to see you all coming from all these different places. I'm originally from Austin, Texas, and I did see a couple of people from Austin. I even saw someone coming in from Lubbock, and that's where my family is, and you don't see people coming from Lubbock every day. So I'm super excited about that. Um, so like Jamie mentioned, I am a solutions architect and I work primarily with nonprofit customers such as yourself 
And so today I'm excited to have this opportunity to share with you how some of my nonprofit's customers are taking advantage of AWS and how your nonprofit organization can innovate with AWS and what that cloud journey can look like. Um, so if you're someone who, you know, you don't really know much about AWS and that's all good. That's why we're here today. Um, and in fact, I'm going to start with that, right? So let's start a little bit about what exactly is AWS. So AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. And how we started was a couple of years ago, you know, we were Amazon.com and after operating Amazon.com for decades, we realized we got very good at one thing, and that is being able to operate technology at a massive scale. So we thought, well, why don't we take this knowledge and this technology that we've developed and share that with other customers, with other businesses and organizations such as yourself? And that is how AWS was born. So at AWS, we provide cloud computer technology. And essentially what that is, is the on-demand delivery of IT resources via the internet with the pay-as-you-go model. And this is very similar to how you get electricity in your house, right? So in your house, you have a light switch. You turn that on, you get electricity, your light goes on. And when you're done, you turn that off, the electricity goes away. You're not having to go out and build your own power plan, connect your own power lines, and to generate your own electricity. You just consume it, and you only pay for the amount of electricity that you're consuming and nothing more, and you don't have to manage any of the infrastructure. And that's very similar to how cloud technology works. So traditionally, right, you might have hardware on premises for your storage, for your servers, for your databases. But with cloud technology, you are now able to access these IT resources through the internet and no longer having to manage the physical resources yourself because we take care of that. You just worry about consuming the technology um, through the internet and you are only charged for the amount that you're using, right? You're not um, charged for anything that um, you are not utilizing um, or over provisioning, you're only being charged for whatever it is that you consume. So in a nutshell, that is what AWS is and what cloud computing is. Now, what I wanna start, how I wanna start this conversation is by sharing with you how some of the nonprofit organizations um, are utilizing cloud and some of the benefits that they realize from um, utilizing AWS. First one I want to share with you is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So back in 2010, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they embarked on a project of library and archives where they want to um, digitize their archival content, right, for better preservation. So some of the contents that they have are physical articles or it's tape recordings of ceremonies or artist performances. They are B-rolls or audio recordings. And so, as you can imagine, these performances, you know, these are very unique uh, footages and assets that they want to make sure that it is very securely protected and well preserved. Well, they were using um, hardware that was becoming outdated. It was becoming expensive to maintain, and not only that, it was prone to failure. And so they decided to turn to AWS instead. Um, they were looking for a centralized digital media repository that can handle all sorts of different types of format of their digital assets um, that's not re uh, reliant on data technology. So they started utilizing our stored services as well as our archival services. And with that, they were able to preserve over 2,000 files that total up to over 300 terabytes of unique uh, digital media. And with that, they were able to not only securely preserve their digital assets, but also this allowed them greater access to their archival content and has facilitated better internal efficiencies because they're no longer having to worry about the outdated physical technology that they have on premises. The next one I want to share with you is Code.org. So Code.org is an organization that provides free K through 12 computer science curriculums to students so that they can make the computer science education more accessible. 
And every year they have this event called the Hour of Code, where over 100 million students from 180 countries log on to their website to participate in this event. Well, as you can imagine, this one week of event brings on a lot more traffic than what they typically see on a day-to-day -day basis. So they were looking for a solution that not only offers them the scalability to be able to meet the demand of this event, but also the high availability so that the students who are participating in this event has a good experience and do not um, encounter any disruption. And they were able to accomplish that with AWS. They specifically took advantage of a feature that we have called auto scaling. And just like its name, it can automatically scale your resources based on the demand. And so with that, they were able to scale up to meet the demand of the hour code event. But not only that, after the event, they were able to scale back in. So they're not paying for the idle resources um, that they no longer need because the event's over, which traditionally they would have to do on premises, right? You, they would have to over provision for the peak demand. Um, and for the rest of the year, those resources are sitting there not being used. And because of that, they saw a $1.3 million in terms of savings, operational cost savings, um, after running their platform inside AWS. The last um, customer case study here I want to share with you is the Los Angeles LGBT Center. So the LA LGBT Center, they um, had a health program and they wanted to spin up a contact center for this um, specific health services program that they were offering to their community. Well, they were evaluating the different options and they decided to look into um, our offering of a virtual contact center. And they found out with our contact center, they were able to build a basic contact center within just a matter of minutes. And within a week, they had a fully operational call center taking live calls from their community for their health and services programs. And to show to you, you know, the scalability and the capability of this contact center, um, they use the same contact center during COVID-19, which, as you can imagine, um, their call volume increased by a lot, right, being the health services programs. Um, but during COVID, they didn't have to add any resources or any additional agents. They were able to handle the increased volume of calls uh, with their existing staff uh, because of the help of our virtual call center. And so um, they really realized value from this project, and they had another project um, where they had a telethon um, event that they needed a contact center to take in calls from the TV viewers who were calling in for the donations. Um, and because they had that experience first time around with the contact center, they were able to spin up this uh, special event telethon contact center within minutes again and able to um, handle the call volume and had a very successful event for that fundraising event, raising to nearly $1.3 million. And so I hope these three cases really showcase to you the different aspect, aspects and different benefits that our customers are seeing from running their workloads inside AWS. Now, before I dive deeper into you know, some of the benefits of the cloud and uh, um, tools that we offer, I want to see where the audience is. So put a one in the chat. If you know today is the first time, one of the first times you've heard about cloud and you're here to learn about what is the cloud, right? Put a three in the chat if you are, your organization is actively running workloads in the cloud, whether that be AWS or other cloud provider. And put a two if you're somewhere in between. You know what cloud is. Don't quite really have workloads in the cloud yet, but we're, we're working on that and that's why we're here today. So just help me gauge the audience a little better. Okay. Thank you. I am seeing a pretty good mix of one, two, the three, and I like that 1.5. Um, all right, that's really good to know. Thank you for that. All right, so it looks like we have a good mix of audience here. Um, that's exciting. That's exciting. Um, so hopefully, you know, if you are someone who's new to the cloud, 
by the base, by the customer story, you were able to kind of see where cloud can come in to be beneficial to you. And if you are a two or three, you know, um, hopefully that gives you some additional ideas of, of what you can uh, launch in the cloud for your next workload. So the next part, um, I want to dive a little bit more into benefits of the cloud. So in these organizations that I showcased to you, right, we talk about how they found value with AWS, whether it is migrating or launching new workload inside AWS. So basically what they did is in this very technical world where technology is advancing so quickly, they realized that there's a need for their organization to innovate with the technology. But rather than becoming a tech company themselves, they simply look for ways where our AWS existing technology match what it is that they're trying to accomplish and utilize our existing technology to help them achieve that mission. So in the beginning, um, I mentioned that I'm a solutions architect. Now, how I typically explain to my customers what that means is that I am here to understand your organization's mission, right? What it is that you're trying to accomplish, what challenge, uh, what goal you have. And I'm here to help see where AWS technology can fit into your goal. And as part of my solutions architect job is for me to learn the ins and outs of our AWS services, right? Which we have a lot of them. We have services and tools and technology that can support virtually any technical workload. We have some more building block services that you would typically see in an on-premises environment, such as servers, databases, uh, storage, file systems. But we also have more fully featured services that you can take advantage of right out of the box. So for example, we have machine learning services that maybe you want to have a more personalized email campaign. Or maybe you want to be able to take your physical documents and scan them and digitize them and extract information from them. We have tools for that. Uh, maybe it is virtual desktop that you want for your organization rather than issuing out physical laptops. Or maybe you want to do analytics on your Dota data and display um, some sort of dashboard for any analytics, right? So we have lots of tools um, and resources and features and services to be able to help you with that. And the possibilities, I mean, they are endless. Um, and, you know, that's part of my day-to-day -day job, as I mentioned, is see how what your mission is and how these technology can uh, match the goal and the mission that you're trying to accomplish. So with that, um, I want to share with you the five most common benefits that I hear from my customers of how they have benefited from the cloud. Now, first one is being able to easily experiment with new ideas. So let's say that um, you want to do something with your old data, right? You have a lot of data, you want to um, do some sort of analytics on it and do a dashboard. Maybe it's donor information, right? Or maybe it's member engagement information. Well, with the cloud, you can easily turn on the service, try it out, see if it works, see if it's exactly what you were imagined. If it is, great, let's expand on that and move forward with that. If it's not, no worries. You can turn off the service and no longer have to pay for it, right? As long as you properly take down um, the resources, there are no contract, no commitments, you stop paying for it. Um, and the other thing is like the credit programs that Jamin mentioned in the beginning with $1,000 from TechSoup, um, a lot of times we see that that's generally enough to cover organizations that are experimenting in the cloud and try out anything um, that they want to see if it works, right? And a lot of our services also offer free tier, which allows you to try it out. Um, and basically it's like a little bit of a free trial, right? To try out, see if it's what you need. The other benefit is the ability to scale, um, to meet your demand. So like the example that we gave earlier with code.org, um, if your organization has a special fundraising event, or maybe it's a special community event, or maybe that you really only need your resources from nine to five because that's when people are in office and we don't really need it um, after work hours or on the weekends. While with the clouds, you are able to scale out when you have increased traffic and scale in or turn off the services completely if you're when you're not using it. 
Um, and this scalability allows you to quickly meet the demand without having to go through the physical racking the servers, ordering new servers that you probably have to go through in a traditional on-premises environment. And that also leads to the third benefit, which is cost saving, right? So if you are able to scale out only when you need to and scale in when you no longer need it, um, you're not paying for idle resources um, that are sitting there or over provision resources that you're not really using. And so this allows our customers to uh, see a cost savings Right. And with the cloud, there's no upfront cost, there's no contracts, there are no commitments. Um, you really only pay for what you use. The next benefit that they see is innovation. And this really comes in two different ways. So first is at AWS, we're constantly innovating. We are listening to our customers to hear what they need and what is needed in the field currently. And we are putting out new technology, new features, and improving on the existing ones for our customers. And what that means for you is that you get to take advantage of the fact that we're constantly innovating and um, take advantage of the innovative technology that we have. On top of that, because you are taking advantage of the existing technology that we have, rather than reinventing the wheels yourself, that allows you to save time to redirect that um, time maybe you are, you know, building a new dashboard from the scratch, right? Saving that time to um, focus on projects that you've been wanting to take on, but your team didn't have the bandwidth to, or um, some innovative um, new project, new ideas that you've been wanting to do, but you simply did not have the time to. The last benefit um, is global footprint. So at AWS, we allow our customers to go global in minutes, and that is not an exaggeration or a metaphor. From where you're sitting right now, you can turn on a server that's on the other side of the globe in Australia, in Asia, in Europe. And this is really beneficial for our customers who have a global audience, global members, and allows them to bring their application closer to their end user, no matter where they are, so that they can all have the same great experience. Now, I talked a lot about cloud benefits, right? How great cloud can be. But that's not to say it's going to be easy and that there's not going to be challenges along the way. So some of the most common challenges I hear from my customers on um, why there's blockers about them moving forward with the cloud. Uh, first one is cloud sprawl. So this happens when there is no one leading the charge um, or to there to define best practices. And that's when you run the risk of sprawl. So a lot of the organizations that I've worked with, they use a lot of third-party solutions or software as a service product in their organization. And it makes sense, right? Because it's easier to have those software as product solutions rather than having to do it yourself. But what happens is when you have many different products, there is a lack of consistency and that leads to a sprawl. And so when you try to bring it all back together, it becomes a little bit challenging um, because we have so many different standards, protocols that we have to follow. The next one I hear quite often is, well, we are a small IT team. We're a small organization. Uh, maybe you are a one-man shop. Right. And it's hard to innovate when your IT team is already overwhelmed as it is, and they don't really have the bandwidth to take on any additional projects um, at this time. And the last one I hear a lot is limited funding. So the perception of having not enough funding to get started or to make significant progress in the cloud. So if you are someone who resonates with one, two, or maybe all three of these challenges, um, just like Jamin at the beginning, I want to let you know, you are not alone. We have experiences with thousands of nonprofit customers, just like yourself, and you will be surprised that the ways that, you know, the resources that we can provide or the ways that we can get around some of these challenges or other unnamed challenges that you may have in mind, right? So to name a couple, we have the TechSoup credit program, Jamie mentioned in the beginning, the partners um, that can come in and help you build if your IT team is overwhelmed, right? We also have special teams within AWS that handles migrations or data analytics solutions that can come in and help you, um, trainings, webinars, and I can go on and on about the resources that we have. 
And so the bottom line I'm trying to get to here is, you know, I understand that there are challenges, but reach out to us, let us know. We have ways that we can help you address this um, and we are ready to get started whenever you are. Um, so in this next part, what I wanna share with you is how do you get started? So with the challenges, right? Cloud can seem daunting. And what I find sometimes is helpful for some of my customer is have a little bit of a structure, right? If you can see where you can potentially go, you can see the next step, then it's easier to move forward rather than um, having no structure and not sure where to go next. So this right here is a cloud transformation journey that we've identified. Now, of course, every customer's journey is going to look different, but um, through working with multiple customers, we were able to distill these four phases that we see most customers go through. So starting on the top left, we have the envision phase. This is where you are identifying what it is that we are trying to do and why. You want to identify your goal, your priorities, what workload are we trying to innovate, um, and what project do we want to take on. After you have the what and why of you want to go to the cloud, we move on to the align phase. And so this is where you are identifying who's going to work on this project. How is it going to get done? And when is it going to get done? You align all the stakeholders that are involved. Um, and then we move on to the launch phase where we are testing it out, right? We're building a proof of concept inside the cloud, trying it out. Does this meet our expectations? If not, let's try it again, right? This is where you're testing and building and doing more testing and more building. And once you feel like, you know, you've reached an end product that satisfy the goal that you set out to do, then we move on to the scale phase where you take that proof of concept and make it into a production level um, application. And then we go back to the drawing board, right? See where are there are additional opportunities for us to learn and grow and innovate. Now, one thing I want to make clear about this is that it's an iterative approach, right? You uh, to be successful in the cloud, this kind of cycle will continue to go through because there's always some place for improvement. And so being okay with an iterative approach like this is essential for being successful in the cloud. So with that, I'm going to take a quick pause and see for the audience. So I know we have quite a bit of a dispersed audience, uh, diverse audience um, between, you know, new to cloud versus you already have the workload in the cloud. I'm interested to see where are you and your organization in the cloud journey? Do you think you are maybe a one where you are in the envision phase where we are starting a new project? Um, we're trying to identify the what and the why. Or two, you're in the align phase. You are identifying the who and how we're going to get it done. Or three, you're in the launch phase where you're currently testing um, and building it out the proof of concept to see whether it matches your expectations or you are in the four uh, scale phase where you are now ready to turn that into a production ready environment before we go back to the drawing board. I like the point ones, one, three to four, okay. See some twos. So we have some ideas about what we want to do, okay. All right, and I see some threes too. All right, thank you all for uh, participating in the chat to let me know a little bit about where you stand. Um, again, I see a pretty good diverse audience. Um, I do see quite a bit of ones and twos, a couple of fours um, and a very unique point one. Um, all right, so what I want to do in this last kind of bit of the presentation is to go through each of these phase a little bit more and show you, well, if you're in, let's say, envision phase, how are we going to move to the next phase, right? What are some questions we should be asking ourselves? And on each of these, in each of these phases, where can AWS come in and help? So envision. Like I said, you know, this is where we are identifying the what do I want to do and why is it that this is what we want to do, right? 
Um, so that can be maybe we want to cost optimize. Maybe we want to um, have better efficiency. Maybe we want to increase member engagement, right? Uh, so if you're in this stage, let's take a step back. Let's say you, you, know, you haven't quite really identified the what and the why yet. What can you do? Well, there's really two things. So first, I would encourage you to look at your organization's mission. Right, because at the end of the day, that is what your organization is all about, and that's why you're here. So look at your organization's mission and let that drive your goal. So giving you an example, let's say that I have a local foods bank, a nonprofit organization where I deliver food and I want to set out to improve the food insecurity in my community. Well, that's my mission. Well, some goals I can potentially have is, well, maybe I want to educate my community about uh, food insecurity, right? So that I can have better support in terms of resources or donations. Uh, maybe it is have a better, um, more efficient kind of delivery route, right? If I'm delivering uh, food to the homebound individuals um, that are in need of our services, right? So now that I have a goal, so that those are some of the projects that I can work on um, because of the mission and the goal I'm setting out to achieve, right? So maybe I can work on um, having a better way to reach out to my community, whether that is having a call center so people can come in and ask questions, or it's a chat bot, right, where they could come to our website, learn a little bit more about uh, what it is that we're trying to accomplish, or maybe it's having a better website in general, right, that can better inform the public or have volunteers sign up. And so that's one way to approach it if you're not sure on the what or the why is to look to your organization's mission. The other method that you can take is identify some of the manual processes, some of the annoying tasks that you have to do that's taking time away from you to put into your organization. So what I mean by that is, you know, maybe you have a database, a volunteer database that you have to manually back up, or maybe you have um, event pictures that are from um, events that you host and you have to back up those pictures uh, manually to a tape and ship, it out, ship that off to a third party um, provider, right? Or maybe it is important documentations that you also have to do that for. So those tasks that take time that are taking time, that take time away from you dedicating those time to maybe, um, you know, come up with a better website, incorporating chat box into your web, website or building a dashboard to, do, dashboard to do analytics, right? So find those manual processes that's taking time away from you to dedicate towards your organization's mission instead. So how does AWS fit in if you're someone who's in this stage? Well, there's not a one-size-fit-all solution, right? So nonprofit, um, this, the space of nonprofit is so great because there's so much diversity. We have organizations who's working on healthcare research or uh, membership engagements, right? Or we have volunteer organizations. We have zoos, uh, you name it, right? It's such a diverse space. There's really no one size fits all solution because everyone is so different. And so what we do here in this space is we have a working backwards session. So at AWS, we embrace the concept of working backwards, where we look at the end goal of where you want to be, um, and that is the what, or the what, the what, and the why um, of your project, right? And we work backwards from there. We retrace the steps. How can AWS, Where does AWS fit in? Where does AWS tool fit in to help you get to that end goal? So that's the envision phase. Let's say you are in the align phase now. So this is again, how you're going to do the work, who's going to do it, when is it going to be done, All right? So if you're someone who is here, what are some questions you can ask yourself, some items you can address and how does AWS fit in? Well, um, if you're here, we want to, first of all, identify a leader who's going to drive this project, right? This is somebody who's going to bring everyone together, who's going to ask the hard question and the right questions to help drive the team forward. And you also want to identify the who of the project. And that's not just the people who are going to be working on the project, but also the end user who's going to end up consuming this product, right? What, what is it that they need, right? Getting all these different stakeholders together and have everyone voice out their fears, their blockers, and their hesitation, because getting these 
um, fears out, voice them early and get everyone on the same page is really important to have a successful comp journey because we want to make sure that everyone is committed and ready to start. Now, if oh, the other thing that we want to make sure to do in this phase is have goals and success criteria. So, you know, is it that our success criteria is we reduce the cost by 30% or is it that we uh, improve our delivery time of um, the product by five minutes, right? What is that success criteria? How do you know that you've succeeded at the end of this project to what you set out to do? And so where AWS can come in and help during this stage is for one, we can help with the blockers, right? So the special programs I mentioned, we can help with migration. We have teams that come in to help you architect a data analytics solution. We have um, partners who can help you build. We have credit programs, right? That can help you with the blockers. Um, and so voicing your um, fears, your hesitation blockers to your AWS team and allow us to help find ways to work around that. Um, and a lot of the tools that we offer um, are also free to you, right? So for example, I am here, like I mentioned, to help um, you see how AWS technology can fit in your mission, while me and my team of solutions architect, um, as well as specialist solutions architect who dive into specific domains, we are a free resource to you and your team. Um, and so really, the ways that we can help in this stage is endless, so just reach out to us and let us know what your concerns are. So we address the concerns, we have identified the success criteria, now you're in the launch phase where you're testing and building um, and putting a pilot project together and see what it looks like. So the question to keep in mind here is how will you know if you were successful, right? So some of the items that you can address or think about here is, first of all, identify what you want to build in your proof of concept. And um, if you are not sure, well, how do I know what features I want to include? Look back to your initial goals, right? Remember the working backwards. What, were, what are you here set out to do? Don't get sidetracked by the technology and the services. Focus on the big picture. Um, your pilot, your features should have a clear goal and a metric to demonstrate the value um, and on how it maps back to the success criteria that we've set out, right? Um, and this is where you want to iterate and build and test. Um, and you should always be asking yourself during this iterative process of testing and building, uh, where is the value lie, right? And identify what technical constraint is blocking you from realizing that, um, that uh, value um, and kind of, uh, and reaching that success criteria, Man reaching that success criteria, yeah. Um, so how can AWS help here? So AWS can come in and help you understand your goal and project and help you identify a uh, proof of concept to build, right? We can help you sit down and talk through, you know, what are some uh, features that we think it's good to put in and um, what are some um, good uh, success criteria that we are measuring and remind you of how to map back to that, right? Uh, we also have credit programs to fund the POC. Um, as you tried this out in your AWS environment. And we also have partners who can come in and build for you um, and help you identify some gaps. Um, and that leads us to the last phase, which is the scale phase. So again, this is where you're taking that proof of concept and you're scaling it out to a production environment. Now, this is where we want to um, ask ourselves, do we meet the goal? Do we accomplish what we set out to do. If not, no worries, right? There's still time and opportunities to reiterate um, and improve from that. And this is also an important part where you want to make sure you train the other teams who may not have been as involved so far, right? So for example, the finance team, right? This is an important um, phase where you want to make sure they understand how AWS billing works, how to access the billing console and how to see what they're getting charged with or maybe your operations team on how to reach out to AWS support to troubleshoot if something were to happen. Things like that to make sure that, you know, everyone has a good handle of what their role is to continue to make this project successful as you manage this in the cloud. And hey Angela, yeah. I think that's a really good segue. Um, it's perfect actually, right into hearing a little bit of 
about how this is actually taking shape in real life. First and foremost, thank you. That was incredibly uh, informative, really well done and well spoken. So thank you so much for giving us that overview of what organizations are doing and how um, those on the video and, and a webinar can get started. I want to invite now Oscar to join uh, either video. Okay, wonderful. So um, as we discussed at the beginning, um, we, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of resources out there through AWS. And we just discussed about what value AWS, oh, turning on my camera would be helpful, what value AWS can offer your organization. But instead of just hearing it from me and Angela, we wanna hear it directly from a technology decision maker that is working in an incredibly important nonprofit. So I wanna to welcome to the conversation, Oscar from the Indonesian American Association. Oscar, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you and Jamie and Angela? Doing thanks. well. Yeah, doing well. Thank you so much. So to kick off this conversation, I'd love if you explain to the audience a little bit first about who you are, what your organization does, and then we'll jump into about how AWS is adding value to your organization. But to kick us off, if you don't mind introducing yourself and IAA. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Oscar Zaki. I'm originally from Indonesia. I'm a board member of Indonesian American Association. I've been a president, a chairman uh, since 2015. And by profession, I'm also a solution architect. So I've been playing around with AWS and cloud and whatnot. Uh, by background, I'm also a, a CMS consultant when uh, earlier in my career. So when uh, AWS uh, have this nonprofit program, what I did is, uh, at that time, I was the IAA technology person, like what Angela mentioned is the, who's going to do it? Me. Who's going to create the content? Me. You know, typical nonprofit, right? <laughs> uh, everybody's doing the same thing. It's that guy against that guy again. But anyway, so I applied for the, non uh, the free account for AWS uh, uh, that offers the free resources to be used, and I set up uh, website for IAA on it's a it's a service called Lightsail. It's basically it's just a, a service. But IAA is a, a Indonesian American uh, nonprofit that serves the Indonesian American diaspora in Washington DC area. That's for starting. Were wonderful. Thank you. And um, incredible work. And and you know one thing that comes to my mind is I think that might be on the minds of some of our viewers is you spoke a little bit about your technical capacity right you are a solutions architect but the reality is not everyone has that technical capacity so if you were speaking to some people on the line today on the webinar today who don't have that solutions architect experience what are some things that you can explain to them that might be valuable in helping them begin their journey to the cloud again, if they're not so technically savvy today. Got it. Yes. So AWS have a training, free training resources on the AWS.training website. Anybody can join for free, create an account and explore what services that uh, AWS offers. And then from there, again, it's a wide variety of services, but based on what you need, like what Angela mentioned, Maybe it's just as simple as creating a website. There are trainings there how to create a website. You can create a website in different ways on AWS. Just to get started, I think uh, the training website is very helpful. That's where I guess that started to. Wonderful. So yeah, if I can just kind of repeat it, 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 alluding to the free training, that's wonderful. There's a ton right. of free training, even right. Googling it. And also what I hear from you is, starting small, right? You know, even the website is a step in the right direction. Hosting your web website on a uh, service called LightSail that you alluded to. So thank you so much for that information. Uh, another question that I'd love to hear from you is, what was it like from your perspective to have conversations with other team members at IAA to help them understand why moving to the cloud 
or using AWS is valuable to the organization. Can you speak a little bit about your experience doing that and some best practices that you can share with the audience? Sure. Yeah, so we we were a small organization. We didn't have a lot of funding. So to get started having a free cloud resources from AWS as a nonprofit, you can apply for a nonprofit account. You get a thousand dollar credit to get started with, and that you can use to set up your own website. A typical website. If you uh, sign up with some other cloud host, uh, hosting provider, it probably costs you. $20, $30 a month or something like that, right? Uh, with with the credit that you have, that should enough to cover your, your uh, hosting. So basically, uh, your website is free. And then this is what we did at IAA. Last year, uh, because of the website that we have, and then we were able to help people uh, during the COVID, you know, put everything on the website, create webinars and all that. We did everything online. We were able to apply for some grants through the through the countries, through the local nonprofit grants, etc. So when our credit from AWS expired, we applied for um, additional uh, funding to to support our cloud operation, our uh, website operation. So then we get another one. And also TechSoup, of course, offers that uh, the credit, right? Where you pay, uh, I think $95 to get another $1,000 credit, right? That's what we have right now. Wonderful. Okay, so what I'm hearing then is, is you know, the, um, the resources, I, I guess being inquisitive and thinking and exploring about the resources. I think that's a really good takeaway that I always like to make sure audiences know is that oftentimes the answer to your question is out there. It's just a matter of finding the right people to ask and going to the right resources. It's, it's a challenge having kind of resource and support overload because I think it, um, what I'm hearing, it's hard to sometimes navigate. And I think you, you did a good job. Thank you for explaining that of maybe just sticking with the basics to get started um, and sticking close to TechSoup with this credit program. So one more question um, I, I'd love for you to answer. Again, understanding that we have um, nonprofits of all shapes and sizes, big and small, and you are a, um, a someone who has successfully leveraged AWS for your organization. If you could boil it down, and I know this is a really challenging question, so we won't hold you to this on the record, but what might be your words of advice or words of wisdom that you can inspire the organizations listening today um, about or that you've learned on your journey at IAA using AWS for your organization? Um, yeah, uh, I think from, from our experience is, is always exploring the, the possibility. Uh, when we started uh, the website, we were a small organization, less than $5,000 budget. Uh, after that, we were able to get grants and all that, and last year's our budget was uh, close to 200000 so incredible. Wow. Deal. That is no. an incredible story. I'm, I, I didn't even know that. So um, again, exploring and taking advantage of the resources out there. So um, yeah. Oscar, thank you so much for joining us today and for the incredible work that you do for your communities. It's inspiring. It's encouraging to know that uh, you have been able to grow alongside your usage of AWS. So really appreciate you, you joining us on the webinar today. And in the spirit of resources, um, as we begin to close out the remaining part of this webinar, I'll ask Angela, if you don't mind going to that slide one more time that showcases that QR code and the resources exactly right. We'll remind you before we open up for questions right now to ask questions, to be inquisitive to challenge your preconceived notions about what you might think the cloud is and really take us up on our offer. Um, Angela and I and our entire team are dedicated to understanding what your goals are 
and not just providing you the solution on a platter for you to go and build, but instead going with you on that journey to understand how exactly the unique value of AWS and the cloud can support your organization. So definitely take a picture of that scan. I'm also going to put in an email address right here, but um, I want to open it up to questions. I know we have um, a couple in the queue already, um, but let me kick off with one that I read um, and that I think might be for you, Angela. Um, give me one second. I'm just going to open it. Okay, I'm with you, Coach Jay. I hear you. We'll get to that question. I'm just going to answer them. Um, in the order that they kind of came in. Um, okay, so Angela, this is an example of um, someone who might be in their later stage that uh, they're in the fourth stage. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, what an organization has access to uh, to make sure that they're using the right solution, uh, the right technology for their chosen solution? Um, so I guess another way of putting it is, in addition to helping organizations get started, can you speak at a high level of what value and uh, support your team provides for those organizations already using AWS? Yeah, of course. So one thing that I do pretty often with some of my customers is to sit down with them and look at the architecture and what they have, right? And then we work through them and we look at, okay, are these following best practices? Are there areas of improvements? And like you said, right, are we using the right technology here for the right tool for the right job, right? And so we sit down together and we look through those things um, and weight our options, um, and really make sure that the solution that they have uh, makes sense for whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish, right? And so that's one thing that, you know, an, an exercise I tend to do quite a bit with my customers there. Um, and the other thing I would say we do quite a bit there is um, I provide resources to them. Um, you know, they're like, hey, we know we're about to manage this and this is about to go launch, but I'm not quite sure how I would manage this piece, how I would um you know, handle this piece of technology, right, and providing them with the uh, resources to upskills um, their team to make sure they can manage that successfully. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Angela. Um, additionally, we have a question from Alpha, and Alpha is asking what I'm sure a lot of people are questioning is, is, are these resources free or are they paid? And um, for the most part, what we've described today is totally free. Working with someone in Angela's role as solutions architect is absolutely at no cost to your organization. Planning, strategizing, again, comes as a benefit of working with the AWS nonprofits team. Now, once you get into using specific services, there are different pricing structures to using those services. We won't go into them all at once, um, but for the most part, they're all pay as you go. And what we mean by pay as you go is that you really only pay for the resources that you use. In contrast to pay as you go would be an upfront fee where you buy something, perhaps with a license and you're locked in and you have that resource whether you need it or not. So um, thanks for that question, Alpha. Really appreciate it. And it actually leads to another question that we just received. And um, that's asking about the credits that come from the TechSoup credit program. What services do these credits cover? So again, like all answers, there's complexity, but for the vast majority of the services that AWS offers, I'd even go as far as to say 98%, if not 99%, are covered by the, the TechSoup credits. Um, for your information, in case you hear this later, we call these again on-demand services are covered by your credit. For things like reserved instances, if you're familiar with those, or mechanical perk, those are not covered by credits, but again, that's a 1% or two at max of the overall services offered. Um, another question I get here, it, it's to you, Oscar. Um, the question is asking what in your view is next in terms of your usage for the cloud for IAA? What's next on the horizon in your future? 
for um, cloud technology. Yes. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, so uh, what I did is, uh, of course, I started with creating the website, but uh, there are other projects that we are uh, thinking of, especially for the community. And uh, I also help another organization uh, set up their website. Like what Angela said, it's uh, scalability that was important. This other uh, nonprofit, I started small within a week. He launched his website and then he needed additional resources. So then having uh, using AWS that helped me to scale up easily. So scalability is important and we do uh, have other options for, for us to, to start uh, other projects. Wonderful. Thank you, Oscar. And um, I know we're coming up against time. So I, I just want to answer one more question. And it's a really good one. Thank you, Regina, for putting it in the chat. And the question from Regina asks about which services or solutions offered by AWS can help nonprofits, or if I'm understanding correctly as well, what needs of the nonprofits are best aligned with the value that AWS can have. And I uh, only provide this link here in the chat because it does a far better job of explaining it than I can in the next two or so minutes. But if you scroll down and peruse through the AWS for Nonprofits website, you'll see the nonprofit cloud outcomes. There's a list that's about right in the middle of the page. Everything that can help you to get started, helping you with your fundraising, donor and member engagement, helping you to deliver on your mission, optimize your costs and your finances, and much, much more. So that leads me to a uh, kind of closing bit, and that's how can we continue the conversation? And again, we are more than available to engage with you, um, given uh, our, our bandwidth, but if you're an organization trying to get in touch with someone like Jamin, someone like Angela, even someone like Oscar, who's currently using uh, AWS, the best and fastest and most efficient way is to start a conversation with the link that I just provided right here. Our AWS for Nonprofits page right at the top is the start a conversation page. It, it, it feels like a form and I wanna acknowledge that, but it's by no means deflecting and in every intention, uh, it, it, with every one of our intention, it's the fastest way to get you in touch with a qualified individual to help you navigate these resources. So um, with that in mind, I, again, want to thank you so much um, for your time, for your attention, and um, want to invite you to um, continue the conversation. Reach out to us, uh, Angela, Oscar, and myself. If you, if you feel comfortable, um, I'll put our LinkedIn as well into the chat and we are real live human people you can reach out to us we will absolutely do our best to support you um but again thank you so much Welcome for your me. time thank you and thank you for having yeah, me yeah absolutely thanks everyone have a great thank rest you, of your day